Hey guys, and welcome back to another review. Today, I thought I'd take a little look at this story, the Macro Terror, which has just been released for the first time uh, as an animated Doctor Who story because it's been missing for 50 odd years. The reason why I want to talk about this one is because they approach the story quite differently. Uh, and I just wanted to voice my opinions on how they did that and you know what it could mean for the future of animating missing episodes of Doctor Who. I'm not really gonna talk about the story itself so much. The Macro Terror, it's okay. It's an okay story. Um, it wasn't a story that I was particularly familiar with. I mean, I'd heard the uh, audio book and I'd watched the Loose Cannon reconstruction, but I wasn't like so familiar with it that, for instance, that I would have known if a sequence was edited out of episode one. As a story, yeah, it's okay. It's quite fun. Um, there's some good elements in it. I like the, the setting of the camp. You know, it's got kind of a happiness patrol vibe. You know, they're trying to keep everyone to be happy, happy, happy and keep them working. Um, and I loved the uh, the whole thing with Ben turning to the dark side and, you know, being brainwashed. Uh, sorry, spoilers. I should probably put that somewhere. Spoilers. Oh, superb performance by the guy who plays Medoc. I've only really remember him from Carnival of Monsters and Planet of the Spiders playing a very different part, but excellent like that bit that they use in the trailer about um sleep while you can before they crawl all over you or whatever the, the line is that's so chilling it's great no wonder they use it in the teasers there's some good stuff in there i think by the last couple of episodes it starts to slow down a bit i think once you get into the pipes and the mines it's all a bit a bit of a slog um and the ending of the story isn't particularly great it just oh there's an explosion and that's it the macro gone fair enough let's carry on and it's a bit like, oh, really? Do you, could you not? It, there's just doesn't feel like there's much of a conclusion to it. It just sort of ends and that's it. It's a fine example of the sort of monster of the week element of that period of Doctor Who. You know, whether it's Cybermen, fish people, giant crabs, ice warriors, faceless aliens, you know, for this, they animated it in colour, they animated it in widescreen, and they basically only used the original as a vague blueprint. Obviously they use all the original audio that still survived, but they approached it differently, you know. With the other ones, they went back to the scripts and tried to match the telesnaps and tried to get it as close to what would have been seen on screen back in 1967. Here they thought, let's try and not restrain ourselves. Let's try and be a bit more creative with it and uh, just let our imaginations flow. That, I guess, was an area of some contention for some people because it did mean that parts of the story were snipped out due to time and budget constraints. You know, some people just want to see it, you know, exactly as it would have been when it aired. But honestly, for me, that didn't bother me. It really didn't bother me. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, I loved the colour version. That's the only version I've watched so far. I have watched a bit of the black and white version. And uh, the reason why I favoured the colour version is because, all right, I know the Macro Terror is a black and white story, but this production was made to be in colour. And then when you watch the black and white version, I just sort of found like some of the lighting and stuff didn't quite work in black and white. Like the tops of people's heads looked like they were sort of flared out by the lens flares and stuff. And it looks amazing in colour. It looks absolutely beautiful. The lighting in particular and the set design and the character animation, absolutely phenomenal. Without a shadow of a doubt, this has to be the best animated Doctor Who story that they've done so far. With Sun and Moon Studios, who are based in Bristol, like myself, uh, did a phenomenal job in animating this story. The, the, the way that the characters move, there always seems to be a constant flow of movement with each of the characters. You compare this to something like Power of the Daleks, which at the time was great, you know, and I watched it the other day and I still thoroughly enjoyed it, but there's elements of it that feel very static. Elements of it where you hear the audio track and stuff's happening on screen and you watch it and you sort of think, hmm, what, what I'm seeing doesn't feel like it completely matches what I'm hearing. But I think what is good about this version, this Macro Terror, where they completely thought, well, let's just use the audio and go from there, is it's allowed them to be far more free with what they're doing, but it just feels like they're less constrained. And I think when you're working in animation, that works so much better. And I don't think 60s Doctor Who, which can either be a lot of standing around chatting or 
wandering around with just weird soundtracks in the background where you can't really place what's going on. I don't think trying to match that exactly necessarily works very well for animation. Whereas with this, where they're just taking it as a blueprint and going, all right, well, in this sequence, we'll have macros climbing down from the ceiling or we'll have loads of macros swarming out through the tunnels. You know, that would have been impossible on a BBC budget back in 1967. Well, it was impossible because they only had one macro prop and apparently it was shite. Can you imagine like if they'd have animated this and it would have just been one slightly dodgy macro just sort of wobbling about trying to grab at Polly? It wouldn't have been anywhere near as good as what we got, which is, you know, huge, massive macro um, that scuttle around. I mean, Rob Ritchie did an amazing job with recreating the macro because they look properly threatening and scary. Whereas, you know, in the original, they didn't look scary at all. And we've got, you know, reports from Annika Wills and Fraser Hines saying that, yeah, they were terrible. So now saying that, let me talk about the missing sequence from this story. The thing that was cut was the sequence from episode one where the Doctor and Polly and Ben and Jamie, they all get uh, their beauty treatments done. Uh, and it's a nice sequence, you know, it's a fun sequence. Like I said, I am not overly familiar with this story. If I hadn't have read in Doctor Who magazine that they'd cut that, watching this episode, I wouldn't have gone, oh, hang on a minute, something's missing. And my brother, who has never listened to or seen or read anything about the Macro Terror, wouldn't have had a clue either. Um, and did it bother him? Yeah, he said oh, it was a shame that they couldn't do it, but watching the story, he didn't go, oh my God, how dare they not animate that sequence? Not only did they animate the whole story, but they then did a complete telesnap reconstruction of those four episodes exactly as they would have looked, or, you know, as, or as close as they can achieve. So that sequence is on the DVD in various forms, just not as part of the cartoon. So I think the fact that, you know, we have the ability to watch, you know, a full reconstruction as a cartoon, all right, they may have cut a few bits and made a few changes here and there. As long as I can watch the majority of it, I don't mind. And if it means that in the future they have to make more allowances like this and they have to trim little bits, then fine, so be it. Um, I was talking to someone on Twitter about it. We were talking about the Daleks master plan. And I said, if they ever got around to doing that, which is unlikely because it is 12 episodes, cut the Feast of Stephen because it's just nothing to do with the main plot of Dalek Master Plan. They might as well just cut that. Obviously, overall, I would say, you know, try and keep as much of it in. That's not me turning around saying, ah, that's boring, that bit, get rid of it, don't bother. You know, if you can do it, then please do, because obviously it would be nice to have as much of it animated as possible. But I'm just saying that, you know, if needs must, then yeah, cut it, fine. Um, I think so long as you have them a reconstruction, albeit as telesnaps or whatever, on the DVD as well, uh, which has those elements in that they've cut, then that's fine. But I definitely think that if you have a story that is totally missing, so Macro Terror, nothing of it survived apart from a few sensor clips, then go the whole hog, reimagine bits, try and make it more accessible for a modern audience. I think that works great. However, if they were then to now do, say, next year, they released The Faceless Ones, which I think is probably the most likely one they might do, other than The Highlanders, because they've got the assets for Ben, Polly, Jamie and the Doctor. I think in those instances, where a story like The Faceless Ones, six episodes, two of which still exist, with that, what should they do? Should they animate the two episodes that exist? I don't think so. I think they should try and do kind of like what they did with um, Power of the Daleks and try and match it as close as possible. Because I don't think there's much point in animating stuff that already, already exists. In those instances where episodes remain, so like Evil of the Daleks, yeah, try and keep it as close to that as possible. Because I think it would just be weird to suddenly go from, you know, a black and white four by three image to, oh, hello, hello we're in full color, widescreen, and you know, the sets are a lot more extravagant than what we've seen in the existing footage. I think the other thing to remember with, you know, reimagining these stories to an extent, you know, all the characters look like the characters as they appeared in the story. The costumes look very similar to as they appear in the story. And a lot of the sets look similar, just a bit bigger, slightly grander in places. What you have to remember is that with an animation like this, okay, you can go back to the shooting scripts, you can go to the telesnaps, you can have all the goodwill in the world to try and make it as close to that original 60s televised episode as possible. It's never going to be the same as what was aired. And I think whenever you watch any of these things, like I rewatched the Moonbase the other day, 
the the jump between cartoon to live action to cartoon to live action it does take a bit of getting used to because it is different you know there is no way around it there is no way you're going to make that cartoon look exactly as the tv program looked uh, you just have to suspend your disbelief you know and i think when you have a reconstruction like this and it's sort of wildly different from what we get on tv you know obviously in the tv version polly was not picked up by her foot and dangled in the air um you know then if the macro terror actually ever does turn up well we've got the original then and we've got a new cartoon version and you can choose what versions you want to watch the tv version which is obviously the original and the proper version which will be very very different to what we see in the cartoon version so you know it's just nice to have we're just gonna have multiple versions of these stories that's if they ever turn up again but i definitely think sun and moon studios keep them on because they did an amazing job with macro terror they were phenomenal um and you know if you want a video editor only down the road i know where you are they really did bring those characters to life in a way that i don't think we've really ever had with animation before my only criticisms that i would have about this are some of the likenesses the doctor looked great jamie looked great i thought ben looked all right all of the supporting characters looked really good like the pilot and ola well the likeness for polly was pretty bad which is weird because in Power of the Daleks, she looked like Annika Wills. Here, well, she didn't look like Polly. I thought she looked like Billy Piper. There's something about the nose and the eyes and the way that her mouth was shaped and moved, which is also strange because I've seen the artwork that was released by the artist, um, Martin Garrity, I think it was, like before it got into the, into the animation stages, and it looked like her. It was a really good likeness. So somewhere, her face got lost in translation. So overall really really good um i also want to say that the mini episode episode one of the wheel in space that was really good as well that was excellent i'd love to see more of that animated please yeah rob ritchie did a great job the tardis and oh it just looked fantastic and the way that the the tardis doors interior doors opened and then you saw the police box doors <sighs> lovely very nice very nice definitely pick up the macro terror if you haven't already really good stuff I think probably the Faceless Ones next, or maybe the Highlanders, who knows? But regardless of what they do next, I don't really mind, so long as they do some more. Just keep doing what you're doing, guys, because easily the best animated reconstruction of a Doctor Who story so far. Uh, and I'd love to see what they do with other stories and with stories that sort of partly exist, kind of like what they did with Sharda. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about this version of the macro terror uh, it's very nice to finally have it up on the shelf with all the others quite amazing to think that we've got quite a selection now from season four like the season of doctor who that was basically non-existent um, and it's nice because now that it's building up it makes you think well when they start doing some of the 60s seasons on blu-ray we're gonna have a nice season four box set with a large chunk of those missing stories in there in some format so yeah really exciting stuff i can't wait to hear what they've got planned next because i mean it'd be obvious surely they're going to do more please so thank you for watching guys and i'll see you again soon bye bye